I turn with you this morning to Psalm 115. Psalm 115 and verse number 12. And I will also read Psalm 16 and verse 18. God is mindful of you. Be mindful of God. God is mindful of you. And I want you to be mindful of God. And so what I'll be sharing with us is positioning your faith. Positioning your faith. Putting your faith where it should be. In Psalm 115 and verse number 12, the, the word of the Lord says, The Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. Let's read it one more time if you don't mind want to go. The Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of of Aaron. Now, I want you to put your name and personalize that, that scripture into your life. So, I will read it this way and you can follow me. I will say, The Lord has been mindful of me. He will bless me. He will bless the house of Morakio. He will bless the house of Olumodimu. I'll say one more time and you can follow suit. The Lord has been mindful of me. It will bless me. It will bless the house of Morakio. It will bless the house of Olumodimo. I trust God that God will bless your house. I trust God that God will bless our church. God indeed has been mindful of us. Uh, that word mindful is a, a word that can be uh, broken down and segmentized into two parts. And simply mind and full. So, if we are going to rephrase or uh, rearrange that word, where we have something like, the Lord's mind has been full of us. Now, what does it, mi what does it mean when we say that so you are mindful of something? It means that you take cognizance of that thing. It means you pay attention to that thing. If your mind, or if you are mindful of something, it means you pay utmost attention. It means you give that thing a regard. That thing has a place in your heart. It means that that thing or that person merits your attention. So when the Bible says that the Lord has been mindful of us or the mind of God is full of us, it simply means that God takes cognizance of us. It means that, you know, God focuses his attention upon us. And I want you to know that at this trying season... In this time when there is a plague upon the earth, systems are shutting down, our nations are in agony, people are dying, and our lives as we know it has been affected significantly in one way or the other. But in the midst of that, this is a word of encouragement that every one of us must know, must be persuaded of, and must arm ourselves with if we are going to thrive as we should in this season. And that is the fact that the mind of God is full of me. Then that is a divine attention over your life. For it is written in the word of the scriptures that those, uh, who, those who love the Lord, they shall be like Mount Zion, which shall never be removed forever. The scripture says that as the mountain surrounds Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people now and forevermore. In the book of um, Zechariah, the word of the covenant also says to us that, uh, you know, God will be a shield and a fortress. That God will be the fire that compasses us and it will be the glory in the midst of us. And I want you to know that the promises of God are there because God is mindful of you. God has not forgotten you. God knows that you exist. God knows that these are difficult times. God knows, in fact, that we commute daily in the midst of dangers. So, is watching over us because his mind is full of us. God has not forgotten us. God is not so busy with uh, the things happening in the world that he has forgotten about us. Oh, somebody may say, just a little me, a little piece of me. How could I possibly have an attention 
on the mind of the Father. I want you to know that from the beginning of creation, God knew they were coming to the world and God is never oblivious of the fact that there will be a time and a season like this. So he made his promises ready for you so that in times like this, you can step into the promises that he has for you and you can live by the strength of those promises and have a triumphant life. God is a God that is always providing. God is always making provisions. God is always providing something. God is always ahead of the enemy. God is always ahead of Satan. God is always ahead of the systems. And because God is always ahead and nothing catches God on our ways, God has made his promises available for us so that in times like this, our heart will not fail. I read the story of a lady. Who at, time, who at the time was going through a very difficult time in, his, in her life. And she was passing through a difficult time. So one of those days she decided to pray. Or she was in prayers. And she knelt down and began to pray. And in the process of praying. Uh, I don't know if that happens to you. But I'll tell you that it happens a lot of the time. You know you pray and pray. And you think that you are still on this side of eternity. But actually you have closed your eyes and you have slept. So in the place of praying, the lady had prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and was just pouring out her heart to God. and said, God, but why do I have a troubled marriage? But oh God, why is my business troubled? Why is everything at a standstill? What is the problem? Now my health also is failing. I do not even have the physical strength, capability or capacity to handle the pressure. God, everything is let loose to me now. Financially, I'm going down. Earthwise, I'm going down. Family is in disarray. Everything is not working. But God, why me? And in the process of pouring out her heart to the Father... She fell asleep. And when she fell asleep, she had a dream. And in the dream, she saw that uh, the, she saw two uh, uh, footpaths. And she noticed that she was walking on a path and somebody else was walking beside her. And she wouldn't see the person. And, uh, you know, just noticed that somebody was joining with her. All right. And at a time, she, all she could see was just a singular uh, a footprint, all right? She couldn't see the two uh, footprints that she was seen before. Now it has reduced to one. And so she had to complain. And she said, and uh, when she woke up, then she started uh, uh, crying again. I said, God, when the journey was uh, good, you were with me. When the journey was easy, you were with me. I could see you walking by my side. But all of a sudden, when the troubles came, in an enormous capacity. And when things become so boisterous, when I couldn't stand anymore, you stopped walking with me and you allowed me to be walking all by myself. Then the wisdom of God came uh, by the voice of God and God said to her, when things were difficult, I was with you. But once the battle got intense, I carried you. What you see as a footprint, uh, the singular footprint that you see are no longer yours, but mine. When things become difficult, you are no longer living by your strength, you are no longer living by your capacity to endure, but you are being born on eagle's wing, and you are being carried on the wings of grace. COVID-19, God has been ahead of it. He's been ahead of it from eternity, and it's not, it has not come as, a, as an accident. It's not an accident in the agenda of God. God knew from eternity past that there will be a season like this upon the earth. And he wants me to tell you that his mind is full of you, even in the midst of this crisis. God is thinking about you. God is watching for you. He's guiding your steps so that you will not trip. He's preserving your life by a great deliverance. And after this season is over, uh, we will look into the midst of us and none will be lost. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You see, when people go to battle, there are three possibilities. Right? Somebody can go to battle and be conquered. Alright? And so the person dies. And another possibility is for somebody to go to a battle and become wounded. Alright? And another possibility is for somebody to go to battle and to win the battle and to return victorious. And those who return victorious are the people that share the spoil. Look, uh, COVID-19 is a battle upon the earth. But I want to say to you by the word of the Lord, in this battle, you and I will not be wounded. 
Oh, come on. I say you will not be wounded in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In this battle, you will not be lost in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, no arrow of the wicked will penetrate your, your defense in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For you and for your entire household, we shall be among those who partake even of the spoil of this season in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. When the battle is over, we will wear a crown, a crown of testimony, a crown of good news in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to lift your hands to heaven and prophesy with me and say, none of us shall be lost in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because the mind of God is full of us. The mind of God is full of us. The mind of God is full of us. Now, that's the first side to my message. God's mind is full of you. Now, you must allow your own mind to be full of God. God's mind is full of you. God's mind is set on you. God's mind is, is thinking about you consistently and constantly. God's mind is on you. That's one side to the victory message. The second side is that your mind in this season has to be full of God. It's not enough for God's mind to be full of you. That is the truth. But your mind also has to be full of God. Now, see a scripture with me, people of God, in Psalm 16 and verse 8. Psalm 16 and verse 8. Psalms number 16. And let's read from verse 8. Now, I believe very well that the scriptures are placed and written and set for us so that we can gain a kingdom perspective on how to handle the issues of life. Now, God has placed this scripture for us. You know, we read in Psalm 115 and verse 12 that the Lord has been mindful of us. The Lord will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. It will bless the house of Aaron. And we said the operating word in that scripture is that the mind of God is full of us. The mind of God is set, a lot, is set on us. The mind of God is captivated by us. We are the object of his thought. We are the focus of his love. We are the, we are the force, you know, uh, that, that, that he sets his mind on. So God's mind is full of us. But the other side is that our mind also has to be full of him. And look at what the scripture says in Psalm 16 and verse 8. Let's read together, if you don't mind. Psalm 16 and verse 8, everyone, let's read one to go. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Let's read it one more time, please. Let's read it with confidence. Read it with an attitude. One to go. I have set the Lord always before me because he's at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Somebody say, I shall not be moved. Oh, come on. Say it loud. Say, I shall not be moved. Say it with an attitude. Say, I shall not be moved. I have set the Lord before me because he's at my right hand. I shall not be moved. COVID-19, I shall not be moved in the name of Jesus because it is written in the scriptures that those who put their trust on God shall be like Mount Zion that shall not be moved but abides forever. I shall not be moved in the name of Jesus. Yes, even though there may be some roaring, there may be some noise, there may be some negative statistics in the mighty name of Jesus, I shall not be moved. This is my confession. This is my faith. This is my belief. This is my hand this is my medicine this is my protection this is my insurance that i have set the lord always before me and because he's at my right hand i shall not be moved in the mighty name of jesus i stand upon the word of god the word of god is power i stand the word of god the word of god does not fail i stand the word of God, the word of God is authority. I stand upon the word of God. The word of God is safety. I say, I set God before me in 2020 and the, and the days ahead. And because he's at my right hand, I shall not be moved. 
I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved by evil tidings. I shall not be moved by evil news. I shall not be moved by what makes men afraid. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, I have sanctified the Lord in my heart. Therefore, I shall not fear what they fear. In the mighty name of Jesus, in this season, that is a Goshen for me. In this season, I dwell in Goshen. In this season, I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In the name of Jesus, a thousand can fall by my side, a ten thousand by my right hand. But it shall not come near me. I shall not be afraid of the noisome pestilence. The noisome pestilence. In the name of Jesus. Yes, the Bible says, when I see the blood, I will pass over. In this season, there is a passing over. A passing over of evil, a passing over of disease, a passing over of destruction for you and for your household. It is a passing over. The angel of death may be on the street, but for you, it is a passing over. The angel of death may be on the street, but for you, it is a passing over. Mande tasu falika tamede, vrusha falata nata nata, radika palito volikete, mingla. Baruso falatila mengle boso frika tande luta bite beruke tanapa lusa talita kute rende parusha kate mefralika tanda libakuta e masangri gabosha melike branomoso petaya for his banner over me is his love in the name of Jesus Christ blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be the name of the Lord people of God I want you to know. I want you to know that you have a resource, you have a protection, you have a covering, and that is the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. For they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. What we are fighting on the earth in this season is not just a virus. It's not just a microbe. Yes, it is a microbe. You see, you must understand that everything that you see has a spiritual dimension, right? There are workings of Satan. Satan th- tries to take advantage, you know, of physical elements and use it to his destruction, all right? And so that's why every one of us must be uh, harmed with something uh, higher than just mere physical responses. I will tell you, use your hand sanitizers, keep the social distance, uh, keep the rules, uh, walk from home, stay at home, do everything that you have to do in the flesh. Yeah. Everywhere around me, there is a sanitizer. When I came into the hall, the first day before I left my car, I made sure that I had I used my sanitizer. I came in again. I had to use my sanitizer because it's a, it's a spiritual responsibility. You just don't have to be responsible for yourself. You have to be responsible for others as well. If somebody gets on a passing across. But beyond all of those physical measures, you must also take a spiritual standing at this season for yourself and for everyone that is under you. So the word of the scripture says, I have set the Lord always before me because he's at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. I shall not be moved. The person that will not be shaken is the person that has learned the discipline of focusing on the Lord. It's the person that has, uh, that has the trust, that has, that has reposed his or her trust uh, in an unshaken fashion in the Lord. If we will not be moved, If we will not be moved, listen, the the things out there are actually has to move us. But if we will not be moved, it will be because we are properly anchored on the presence and on the power of God. And that is your responsibility as a child of God. That in this season, yes, God's mind is full of you, but you also have to do yours to make sure that your mind is set on God continually. As I begin to uh, put things together with us because I want us to take some few minutes to pray. uh, What are the, how can you make sure that you set the Lord 
before you at all times. What do you need to do? So that you can set God before you at all times. So that you will not be shaken. So that you will not be moved. So that you can be well positioned. So that you can be well anchored. Uh, uh, do you notice something? That when, whenever you are traveling, maybe you are flying from uh, BWI, you are going to Heathrow, London. The pilot only speaks to you the very first time, right? Um, once you get in and he tells you that, oh, welcome, uh, everybody to flight so, 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 and so, uh, from uh, BWO High to uh, London Heathrow, and he tells you uh, this, what the weather looks like. This is, uh, that's not going to be turbulence, but there might be a few turbulence uh, somewhere at some point and all of those things. But don't be afraid. The weather is good. We're going to be cruising on so, 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 uh, uh, miles above the sea level. Whatever it is, he makes his announcement. Is that correct? And once he does that, he tells you to buckle up, to get ready, because the flight is about to begin. And once the flight starts, all right, uh, the captain then announces or removes his own belt and signals that now you can also do what? Uh, remove your belt, you can relax and stuff like that. But here's the point. Do you know that the pilot does not speak to you every time? Hello? The pilot does not speak to you every time. Now, was uh, you bump into, you was you're about to bump into some uh, stormy stuff. Then, it, you know, it tells you again, what do you do? Put on your seatbelt. This is not a time for anybody to move. I will go through this for about 10, 15 minutes or so. He announces again. Then he keeps quiet. He doesn't speak to you again until when you get to London. Is that not correct? But imagine that you have a, a pilot. Now, you expect that your pilot will be as agitated as you. You think he will be agitated? You think he will say, hey, hey, buckle up, buckle up, buckle up, buckle up, buckle up. Oh, oh. And, and he keeps speaking to you and he's just, he's just, you will say, what kind of a pilot is, keep quiet, let me sleep. He doesn't speak to you every time. But he speaks to you at critical times. He speaks to you when you need to have a preparation. The pilot is not agitated. You are the one that is afraid and thinking, hey, the, the wind is contrary. But the pilot has the knowledge that that thing is strong enough, sturdy enough to be able to withstand whatever burst of wind or hair that is coming against it. He has sufficient knowledge, so he has confidence. Now, uh, it, the can you imagine that the pilot of the nations, the king of kings and the lord of lords, the pilot of the entire universe, is not perturbed, is not afraid, is not afraid, is not doubtful in his mind, is not agitated, is not saying whether or not this stuff is going to land safely. No, as a matter of fact, it's very sure that in such a store hours you are going to land. On the other side. Don't be afraid that he's not talking to you every day. Some of you won't go to come and, uh, you know, very early in the morning, I come and wake you up and say, you know, my son, this is uh, uh, three, two hours later, my son, this, 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 this. and three hours later, or another time, my son, this, 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 this. and every day he's just talking to you and talking. I mean, God does not do that. He talks to you when it's important. But what do you need to do? Once the journey starts, you have to put your faith and your trust in the pilot of life. He knows what he's doing. He's got you in mind. His mind is full of you. Now you must allow your mind to be full of him. You have to cooperate with him. You have to be well positioned as he is. But if you are a passenger and you are very worried, then you stand up. And you are running all you are running all through the eye. You are running back and forth. You are running up and down. And you say, hey, you, are, you are kicking the cockpit. All right? Just because you are agitated. But the pilot is saying, settle down on your seat. Settle down. Trust me, let me do the job. 
let me do the narration. All right? I've been through this route. I know how it works. My mind is full of you, but let your mind be stayed on me. For if we keep in perfect peace, those whose mind are stayed on him. And this is the time for your mind to be stayed on the Lord. This is the time for your mind to be stayed on God. Now, let me share very quickly. How can your mind, how can you position your mind to be stayed on God? How can you make sure in this season that your mind is full of God even as God's mind is full of you? Number one, choose to believe. You have a choice to do. Choose to believe. That does not mean that you have been simplistic. That does not mean that, you know, you have been stupid. But no, just choose to believe. This is a time for you to rest in God. This is the time for you to rest in God. See a beautiful scripture in Psalm 27 and verse 13. Psalm 27 and verse 13. Yes, Psalm 27 and verse 13. Let's read it together. I want to go. I would have lost that unless I had believed that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You know what David was saying? I would have been moved. I would have been moved. I would have been moved if not that I have decided to believe to see the goodness of the Lord on the land of the living. I want to say to you, you will not see death. You will not see virus. You will not see affliction. You will see the goodness of the Lord. Huh? You know, death, the way it's prostrate, was passing by. And they said, Mr. Death, where are you going to? He said, well, I just left the other village. Or I left the other city. And I just, um, I killed uh, so, so, so number of people. I said, where are you going to? They said, I'm going to the, uh, to the next city. Ah. He said, but why are you going there? He said, well, I'm going there to do my, to carry out my ministry. And so by the time he was done, they went to interview him again and said, Mr. Death, why are you so wicked? Huh? You killed a, a social number of people in the other city. Now you went further to the other city and we told you, don't kill as much. But why are you just so without pity? He, then Death told them. He said, actually, come to think about it. Oh, I only killed one person. He said, the other 1,000. What killed them was the fear of death. Said death itself. Death said, I only killed one person. The other 999 died because of what? Of the fear of death. Choose to believe. Choose to believe. As many who are afflicted in this season, I want you to know that we are praying for you. You will recover. You will not die. God's mercy will prevail. Any family that is afflicted in this season over the nations of the earth, we are, we are believing God with you actively and we are praying for you that the mercy of God will intervene. That God will lose those who have been appointed to death. And that the mercy of God will turn things around in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the first thing you need to do to make sure that your mind is full of God. Make sure that you choose to believe. Number two, find an opportunity in this adversity. Find an opportunity in this adversity. Find an opportunity in this adversity. There's an opportunity for ministry. There's an opportunity to be a blessing. There's an, just last week, over 4 million people for the first time listened to jo, Joel Austin. For the first time. 4 million people. Over 4 million people. Now, the church itself can only contain less than 30,000 or so. But 4 million people came to listen to the word of God. The church of England, for the first time also, they had about 5 million people all over the world who joined in their online program. That is telling us something. 
as kingdom people, we must not celebrate the adversity. We must look for opportunity in that adversity. We must look for an opportunity to minister, to show love, to give care. All right? An opportunity to bless somebody. An opportunity to strengthen the weak. An opportunity to bless those who are afflicted. Number three, if your mind is going to be full of God, at this time, you have to focus on answers. And make yourself somebody who is an answer giver and not a question. Anybody can see problems, but it only takes kingdom people who are filled with faith to see solutions. Anybody can chunk out statistics there. So people are very light-fingered when it comes to bad news. All right? Keep sending, they keep sending fears all over the world. But for us as kingdom people, we want to make sure that we focus. on Focus on that child that recovered. Focus on the 102 year old who defeated coronavirus. Focus on the fact that it's not, it's not everybody, uh, that coronavirus is not a death sentence. Focus on the fact that there are other things that God keeps us from. That if our eyes were to be open to them, our heart will fail us for fear. So this time I want you to focus on the answer and not on the question. And finally, people of God, I will say that you must become contributors, not consumers. In this season, choose to be a contributor. All right? Choose to give back. Choose to be a blessing. The psychiatrist Carl Meninja says generous people are really here because giving to others is the highest level of living. I read that again. The psychiatrist Carl Meninja says generous people are really here because giving to others is the highest level of living. I want you to tap to the highest level of living. I want you to join those who are, uh, who are, uh, who are pushing out the life of God into the society. Don't, by, by the mouth of the righteous, the city is promoted. So in this season, let's promote grace. Let's promote mercy. Let's flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send a text. Give a call. Leave a note. Anything you can do, let there, let there be hope in the world. Let's tell the world that at this time, coronavirus is defeated, Jesus is lifted up, and the Son of God is glorified. Find a way to reach out to somebody. Find a way to love. That is what it means for your mind to be full of God. Number one, choose to believe. Don't be afraid. Choose to believe. Place the promises of God in your life. All right? And let me add to the last thing, live by the force of prayer. Live by the force of prayer. Every time in the scriptures when there have been plague, God has always shown us a way to come out of plague. Raise an altar. Raise an altar of intercession. All right? Raise an altar of intercession. In the church, uh, in my own family altar, every day we pray. Not, not, not just for, uh, we pray for nations of the world. Even nations that we have never been to. All right? I, I personally will put my hand on the map of the world and prophesy. Lord, please send mercy. This is the time for us to raise our altar. Raise an altar of intercession. And that way, we can set the Lord always before us. And we will not be moved. It is well with you. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord give you his peace. You will live and you will not die. In the name of Jesus Christ. And when this battle is over, you are now we wear a crown to the glory of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, listen to me, my friend. Before I came here today, I took a time to pray with you. That God will minister to your family. And much more importantly, that you will get saved if you are here to give your life to Christ. Uh, the highest thing that can happen to you is for you to have the security in the blood of Jesus. For you to be forgiven for your sins to be forgiven, for you to have the life of Christ and to have the hope of eternity. You will not die young. You will fulfill your days. But that is, that is the place after this place. Are you a member of that kingdom community? 
Have you given your life to Christ? Have you put your faith in God? What I'm saying today will be difficult for you to do if you have not given your life to Christ. And I believe that somebody is listening, somebody is watching, uh, who wants to give his or her life to Christ, and I want you to pray this prayer after me. Would you please, anywhere you are, you can kneel down, you can raise your right hand, you can put your hand on your head. I'd like you to say this prayer after me. Say with me today, say, Father, I thank you for the privilege of hearing your word. Heavenly Father, I come to you today in the name of Jesus. I know that I'm a sinner. I know that Jesus died for me. I cannot save myself. But Lord, you can save me. Please save me. Forgive me my sins. Write my name in the book of life. Make me yours and help me to serve you for the rest of my life. I believe with my heart that Jesus died for me. And I confess with my mouth that I was raised from the dead for my justification. From today, I am no longer a child of the devil. I'm a child of God. I live by the grace of God and I'm saved by grace. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Oh.